long videos are hard to make, so here's a rapid fire tutorial. One concept, three applications, ten minutes. Let's go. This is a clock. There are lots of different ways to build one of these, but this is the simplest because it doesn't require any feedback or complex combinator designs. Out of the box, use this setting on a selector combinator and feed in a single signal. On the output of this combinator, it holds and only updates the signal every clock cycle, which you enter here in ticks. You can use one clock signal to synchronize multiple different factories, or if you use multiple clocks, you will get an asynchronous clocked design. Important note, you may hear clock and think stopwatch, but this application isn't designed to measure time. It's a clock in the electronics concept, a circuit that forces actions to happen on a specific schedule or frequency, more like this. The main difficulty people encounter with the new recipe control functionality in all the new machines is this, or this, or this. When the recipe changes, collecting the ingredients causes the control conditions to also change. If the change is enough to cause a new control signal output before you've finished loading the ingredients into the assembler, the selected recipe will also change and the machine unloads or, and reloads ingredients all over again. A clock circuit here is the simplest form of buffer. There's no need for a blueprint, it really is just one combinator like this. Wired up like this it will hold its input signal on the output for however many ticks you enter. 600 ticks is 10 game seconds, it's usually enough for most quick recipes. As your base gets bigger, you usually need to be able to observe and control factory performance at a glance, and start looking for dashboards or displays. I usually prefer chart dashboards like this, but if you prefer numeric readouts, you've probably seen this issue here. It's tough to read the display because of the rapid updates. Using a clock pulse like this to buffer values for display improves the readability of something like this numeric dashboard. The key design feature here is, so long as this remains a simplex channel, which is only a single signal on this input wire, you can still manipulate the values into individual digits for display after the clock. If you put in more than one value on this wire, you will actually get a random selection here. Maybe that works for your application, but for the clock it's not intended design. So for multiplex signals, for example monitoring science levels like this, you'll need to put individual clocks here. This now shows the level of each science in this lab setup for easy debottlenecking. Still though, it doesn't beat something like this, both for design simplicity and ease of use. Both these numeric dashboard and chart displays are in the pinned comment blueprint book. Now for a fun one. It's a universal experience that the greatest risk of Factorio is the impact of the dopamine loop has on other parts of your life, whether that's work, sleep, or family. Ever settled down to just fix one thing and suddenly it's 3 a.m. on a work or school night? No one, just me? Good to know. I've created and used this on delay timer as a session alarm. It uses a configurable timer. Uh, the default in the blueprint book is one hour. Place it when you start a session and forget about it. 
Nothing will happen for 55 minutes. Then a global alarm enunciates, advising you of impending consequences. At this point, you can remote view to it and delete it. But if you don't, at the 60 minute mark, this request a chest switches on. It detects your highest quality items and eats them. If you let it run, it will destroy every quality item you have. If there's nothing of quality left, it eats all holmium, titanium, and their products, red and blue circuits, and LDS buildings too. This really helps when real world consequences struggle to make an impact compared with in-game consequences. The only thing I request, if I hear about this being used in multiplayer servers without permission, I will find you. If you are looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money, but what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Thanks everyone. I kept it to three, but there are tons more uses for clocks and buffers. At a pinch, they can replace SR blocks in your builds, or pulse width fuel control, but as always, please use the right tool for the job. There's always also beyond us mere mortals. Leave them to the people who build self-assembling factories, computers and such. Now you understand clock circuits, go forth and synchronize things.